Hi everybody and welcome back. Now in this session I want to, uh, I've got a few things that I wanted to share with you. Um, and first of all I want to show you my mat. Now for the thing I've stitched that I'm going to show you I have um, used up some of my scraps and joined them together. Um, anything that's at least two inches wide I'll keep and join together. So this next thing I'm going to show you is ideal for this. Now I have had a new mat now for some time and this is a So Easy mat which is made by the same company that make these rulers here in Australia. I'll just put that down there and I don't know if you can see my other mat which I've just moved up there my other mat was um, Olf, Olaf which is the same company that make the cutters but this one every time I make a cut the wadding becomes attached to my mat and then it leaves behind this hairy which is not good. So what do you do to get rid of it? And I'm sure other people have this same issue. So just a baby wipe. And I have here a paint palette. I use this on the edge like a scraper. Um, not designed to be a scraper but and I'm going to just run my baby wipe over there and then run this paint spatula up and down. Now this is an inexpensive gadget um, from anywhere that sells crafty stuff. I'm pretty sure they have them but it's the only thing I've found that will get all this fluff out of my mat. So if you have a fluffy mat and it's driving you crazy too, try that. <laughs> it works a treat. Fred actually thinks I've completely lost the plot, but that's okay. He knows I have. <laughs> there you go, look, done. So for those of you that have that issue, I just thought you might find that helpful. Now the other thing I wanted to share with you is lately I've been stitching and changing threads and things and um, where's my little scissors? I need a little scissors. Just let me grab a scissors. Okay. So sometimes when I'm using just normal thread so these I get from Embroidery Source here in Australia. They're called King Fit. They're a normal sewing thread. And I really don't want to mix my bobbin up with my um, pre-wound for embroidery. So I found if I take a straw, now I know there's clips you can buy to stick in there and do that, but you know, I've so many threads. By the time I would do all that, I figured a packet of straws is in the drawer downstairs so I've bent that up so that now it doesn't fall out and if you've only got the one bobbin on the top of course you can just sit it on the top of the straw now if you like you could cut that off and snip and put your bobbin thread through the snips and it won't unwind so you could have it long or short or whatever you like. Um, if you don't have a bendy straw, just get some tape and sticky tape it into the bottom of your holder. And there you have it. So this is an embroidery thread. When I was doing something, I wanted um, the thread on the top and the bottom. So now it doesn't get lost. I find sometimes when I do this, I end up wasting this bobbin thread or I end up having to throw it out or it unwinds itself. So that was a way I found of keeping those together. So I just thought I'd share that with you. 
Now, what else do I have? Okay, I have... Da, da, da. Okay, I... As you know, we were on a trip recently. We went back to Ireland and I was all inspired um, by some Celtic designs. Um, my sister gave me a loan of a beautiful book with Celtic designs and uh, my daughter-in-law bought me one to show you how to draw them. So I have used this as an applique for the edge, um, but as an applique in the digitizing program, it doesn't work so well because of all the bits that would need to be cut out. So if you didn't have a cutter, this would seriously drive you crazy. But I do like the design, so I wanted to do it just as a stitch, as a stitch out design. So this is where I started. And you can see here I've had fun patching um, the bits of wadding. So I've basically put this in the hoop, in the um, 220 by 220 hoop. And then I have done my basting stitch around the edge. I've pushed the wadding back out of the way and measured an inch from my basting stitch out to the edge and trimmed off the fabric. So I have an inch all the way around. Um, but I didn't have enough wadding. You know, clearly sometimes you don't think these things through. And I sometimes cut a strip of wadding that fits my hoop and I can just re-hoop, re-hoop, re-hoop. So it's usually only about this size. So if I want to do something bigger, this is a good opportunity to use up all those scraps like this. And I just use the zigzag. You can use uh, stitch number 11 or 12 on your 15. So it's the triple zigzag, does three on the zig and three on the zag. I set the width to five and the length to 1.5. Butt the two together and just stitch. So from here, what I did was I had a green that matched my thread, which was this one. And I also had a darker green that I have used on something else. So I wanted to add some borders, but I also then thought how cool would it be to add some colour in the centre. So I did this one. Now this started the same as this one I've just shown you. We might have to close the door. Um, so what I've done here is I've just taken my uh, glitter pens, my Kaiser Craft pens. Now you could use any of your pens and the thing I like about Kaiser Craft um, they're easy to get. Spotlight in Australia have them um, at times. If you find a Kaiser Craft store or you have some glitter pens at home, try those. But you can actually buy these in ones. So you, you can buy them as a set where you have everything or you could just go in and buy one or two pens for a couple of bucks. So um, I just find that's, you know, really good. And all I did was you just decide what colour you want. Um, I would match your pen colour to your thread colour um, and just colour it in. And you can go over it and then come back and go over it again. Now I have done this before, so that's my green. Let's just try the blue. The blue is quite yummy as well. Now these are glitter pens. So once you've, um, I'm not sure if you can see the glitter in there, but once you've coloured in, you do get to see a little bit of sparkle on there. Now, when this is washed, the sparkle will disappear. You'll still have the colour, but you won't have the sparkle. But what I suggest maybe is to cut yourself a piece of um, fabric do some doodling and do some heavy colouring in like this is coloured in 
and then um, throw that in the wash and wash it in the same way you would wash the finished article and see how you go. You can of course get a medium, a fabric medium and paint that over the top. I didn't bother with that. This is, it is what it is and you know I think I can live with the sparkle being gone if it gets washed and it's gone. <gasps> Fred is shocked. <laughs> Jerry with no sparkle, but there you go. So that was that. So I then added um, the extra onto here. Now I did that just by, um, I'm not going to stitch this out because I think you're all able to do that. I placed that on there. Um, I didn't even pin or anything I just placed it on there and I used the narrow walking foot with the needle in the center because it's as good as close to a quarter inch and if this is going to be like a table topper or something I don't think it needs to be ex the exact if it's a little whisker over then that's okay now when it was done I pushed the fabric back this way okay and I did the same on the bottom so I did top and bottom and then I did the sides in this color okay so once this was done and then ironed this way where I had this extra fabric on the end I simply turned it over make sure the wadding is out of your way place your ruler on the edge and just trim off the edge okay and then move to your next piece so I did that so these were cut at one and a half inches once that color was done then I've placed the green on the top and tipped that out and done the same thing again and then I did the wider border at two and a half inches and push that out. Now you know how I hate doing binding girls so um, I've put the green on the back, brought it to the front, mitered all my corners and just done a blanket stitch facing in so the straight edge of the blanket stitches along the edge of the green I've used a green thread so it's does not that noticeable and then just blanket stitched all the way around um, I may go back in and do one row of ditch stitching on the green I don't know I don't really need to because I guess everything is stitched to the wadding so so that was that and I do I do like the color so if I just show you together having it colored in just gives you so this could be any color if you wanted to make it to match your decor you could do it in blues or greens or mauves or whatever color you you like black and white would be stunning so there you go so that was that now the other thing I wanted to share with you was this so I am doing a digitizer class which will be at the bottom of the list when you um, go in to look at what's there um, and I've done a couple of quilting designs so there will be a picture for those with the digitizer so that you can um, do what I'm doing and I will give these designs out to everyone in the studio that I've created so that you could um, you can stitch them out too so this was one of the designs that I created now as a background as a fill-in it's a great um, it's got great texture and shading in it. Um, it was a lot of fun to do. I did it here as a class and the girls really liked it. So 
you get to see squares and then uh, triangles and diamonds so the more you look at it the more it just boggles your eyeballs so that was one and then this was the other one which is very similar but it's half circles and again I just feel it could be a good fill in block if you're doing something and you want to add a block that um, maybe it's just a plain block but you want to add some texture so it feels really lovely it's stitched out really nice um, so that's that so these will be available to download for those that don't have the digitizer for those that do I will be doing the lesson on how I did this and how you can do it and that's it from me so enjoy it's been terribly terribly hot here we're all melting so I'm going to keep the fans going and I look forward to seeing you in another video soon bye for now